Hello there my cuties, it's Yellow Alert Commanderin and today my cat is sleeping right here so that will definitely become a distraction at some point during this video. But yeah, you've read the title, you know what today's video is all about. It's about convenience stores in Japan and ways that they are convenient See, see why they see why they named that. But you might not actually know. I want to get some background to this. So, I'm from a country, the UK, where at least when I lived in the UK, I don't know if it's changed in the last few years, but we didn't really have like convenience stores. We had local supermarkets, which were just like small versions of supermarkets in local areas, but they closed at like 10 or 11. I used to work at one actually, Sainsbury's. We have like gas stations, which I guess sometimes sell like similar things, but I really wouldn't call them convenience stores. At least I wouldn't compare them to Japanese convenience stores. I think they're quite different. I actually don't really know what it is about the UK, but there's just not like a 24 seven convenience store chain. Has that changed in the last few years? Was it just because I didn't live in like central London? I don't know. At least what I'm trying to say is my first real experience with convenience stores was in Japan. They do have convenience stores in Sweden but I left Sweden as like a child so. So if some of these apply to like convenience stores in other countries I do apologize. It's just because they're like amazing to me because I'm like whoa I can do this in the UK. Because I know that like a lot of the convenience stores for example 7-Eleven I believe are actually originally from America and they're like a big thing in the US. But I still really feel like a lot of these are like really unique to Japan. And it might just be fun for you to hear about, especially if you're someone who wants to live in Japan. These might be like useful things for you to like keep in the back of your mind for like when you move and then you'll be like, oh, I can do this in the convenience store. You know? Because a lot of these I've just figured out like over time. I just thought of them as like a place where you can conveniently buy food. Like that's it. Turns out you need a lot more for a convenience store to be counted. So yeah, these are like unexpected ways that convenience stores are convenient, at least in my experience. So I apologize if any of these are things that you can do in like every other country, <laughs> just not the UK. Okay, so first of all, you can actually pay most bills in the convenience store. Like pretty much every bill, I think the only bill that we don't pay in the convenience store is like my rent. But even like my taxes and stuff, I pay in the convenience store. I don't wanna show you my specific one because it has like my address and everything on it, but they give you like a slip with like your name on it and how much you need to pay and then you go to the convenience store and you can buy all your other snacks and then you give them the slip at the cashier and they just beep beep, stamp stamp, done. You've paid your bill. It's super convenient. <laughs> I thought originally, <laughs> but then sometimes actually you end up just forgetting about the bills. Like they just pile up and you're like, oh no. So you need to be really organized about that. Today we've got like a new drawer thing and so we're gonna keep like a drawer specifically for bills. Honestly, there have been times where I needed to pay a bill and I just forgot about it. I have ADHD. <laughs> like I remember recently the data on my phone just like stopped working. I was like, whoa, what's going on? My phone's broken. I called the people at Docomo, which is where I get my phone service. And they're like, yeah, you didn't pay your bill two months ago, but you paid last month. And it's one of those things where like the bill just like disappeared somehow. Uh, that's more of a me problem. If you are a regular human being who is capable of keeping track of simple notes around the house, then this is going to be very, very convenient for you. In the UK, everything just gets taken out of your bank, I think. I don't know. I lived with my mum, so I just gave my mum money and she took care of everything. Oh, but that brings me to my second point, which is that you can also pay for your online purchases at the convenience store the same way that you can pay for bills. Now this is super convenient, especially in Japan because a lot of people don't have like Visa credit cards or like debit cards. I actually don't know why. Like a lot of my friends just straight up don't have a card. Sometimes when I'm like really lazy and I don't want to fill out all of my information, I'll just choose the option to pay at the convenience store. And then once the slip arrives, whenever I go to the convenience store, because you go to the convenience store anyway, just for like midnight snacks and stuff, you know? I pay for my online purchase and that's that. You can pay for your online purchases with cash. Super convenient. I just, I feel like that's super uniquely Japanese. I actually think that that's how a lot of people pay for like online subscription services as well, like Hulu. I'm not entirely sure though, because a lot of people just straight up don't have cards. Again, as I said, it's like so weird. I do have a card in Japan, but it's like one of those cards that doesn't even have like a chip and you can't pay for things with it. I don't think I can make online purchases with it. No, it doesn't even have like the, the three numbers at the back. So a lot of people just like have those cards and then obviously you can't use those to pay for things online. So. Super convenient. Even if you don't have a Japanese bank card, you can still shop on like Amazon and stuff. Which actually probably does more harm than good. Let's move on. Okay, this next one is like kind of weird, <laughs> but I really like it. They don't do this in the UK. I don't, again, I don't know other countries do this. Guilty of not knowing stuff. But when you buy like a pudding cup or like a dessert cup of any kind, there's like a picture on the side that shows you all the layers. 
It shows you everything labelled that's in the pudding cup so you know everything that's in it. I don't know, in the UK you just buy things and I guess you would just kind of like guess what was in it. This might also be because a lot of Japanese desserts and stuff tend to have like a lot of layers and stuff. I guess in the UK you would just buy like a pudding and that'll be it. But it's super convenient because sometimes just by looking at the packaging or something you don't actually know what's inside. If there's something in it that you don't like then you already know that you're not gonna like it. I think it's a really convenient way of knowing whether or not you actually want to get something. Next is things like copy machines and printers. Now this is amazing here because there's no way that Japanese apartments would ever have the space for like a copy machine or a printer and you need them for daily life. I remember especially when I was a student I needed to go and use this convenience store's copy machines and stuff all the time. But it's amazing because every single convenience store has them. You literally just put in the coins and you can make your copy and when you pay taxes and you need to copy like your residence card and stuff like it's so amazing to have that there. And just generally if you need to like print stuff because in daily life you do need to print stuff. Also printers are a pain in the ass to have. Jesus Christ. You would like buy a printer and then you would put the ink in the printer and then they'd be like there's no ink. Huh? I just put the... I just... Huh? So I'm glad I don't have to deal with that. Next is actually related to the Amazon packages. I probably should put those together, oh well. If you are someone who's very, very busy and you live in an apartment that doesn't have like a thing for you to put packages and stuff in, which I definitely used to back when I was a student, I was always out and I never had like time to just wait around for a package, you know? What you can do instead is you can have it delivered to your nearest convenience store. For me, that was my local family mart. I would just have it delivered to there. I would get a notification to say it was there. I would go, put in like my order number into a little machine. It prints out a ticket, give it to the people at the tills give it a little scan, done. It's super convenient, especially because Japan is like a rainy season. Japan is like a really safe country, so it's totally fine to just ask them to leave the package outside of your door and stuff. But I used to live in like an apartment that didn't have anything covering my door or anything. So now it's actually rainy season, it's super rainy all day today, and it would just totally rain on my package. So when I was a student, I definitely used this all the time. Also now I have like Amazon lockers. I've never used this, but I've seen them at a few convenience stores and I'm guessing it's like a locker that the delivery man can put your package in and then I guess when you put in like a little pin and then you get your package. Super convenient. Don't take a shot every time I say it's super convenient. Just don't. Okay, so next is the fact that you can actually buy tickets. For example, to Disneyland. You can't actually do it right now, which sucks. For some reason, the Disneyland website doesn't accept any card. Yasuo and I have. We've tried like four different cards, which is super weird because Yasuo actually has one of the cards that's recommended by Disneyland. Yeah, super weird. So one of the only ways that Yasuo and I can really buy tickets to Disneyland, I mean, I guess you could probably go to the Disney store, but a really convenient way is to go and buy it at the convenience store. They have like a little machine of all kinds of tickets. I think you can buy San Diego Land, you know, Disneyland, maybe Osaka, I'm not sure. And then you can pay for the tickets at the convenience store and you can have your tickets nice and ready. You can't actually do this right now because of Corona because Disneyland is limiting the number of people who can actually enter at one time. Time, which actually makes sense, but it means that Yasuo and I just can't go because it doesn't accept our card and we can't buy it at the convenience store. But otherwise it's a super convenient, don't take a shot, way of getting tickets. Next is one that I didn't actually know about until recently, but you can actually mail items from the convenience store. So you don't actually have to go to a post office. Now I live pretty close to a post office, so I haven't actually used this, but I've seen people do it and it seems really convenient. I don't know if it's only within the country, if it's outside the country, and I don't know what the rates are. There's a lot I don't know about this, but it's something that a lot of people do, and apparently it's good. I'll take their word for it. So far, the convenience stores have yet to let me down. Next is one that you definitely should know if you're in Japan because it's going to be so helpful, and that is the fact that you can charge your Suica or your Pasno, so your IC card that you use to get on the trains and stuff. So if you're in a bit of a rush and you're picking up something to drink on the way, you can actually at the same time say something like Suica o negaishimasu and they would let you charge your Suica. So you don't have to do two separate things, you don't have to buy whatever you're buying at the convenience store and then go to the train station and charge your Suica there. Oftentimes there's also people like waiting to charge their Suica. I recommend, and this is my trick, not even related to this video, but I recommend just always checking when you go home or like to your hotel or whatever, how much is left in your card when you beep out and if it's not enough for you to take the train the next day, just charge it before you leave. That way I never have to worry when I'm rushing to the train, I'm late to everything. Whether or not my card is charged or not, I can just run onto the train. Not related to the video, let's move on with the video. There's an ATM in every single convenience store. It's amazing. They always take international cards. If you have like a Visa or like a MasterCard or anything like that, the convenience store ATMs are really, really helpful. Also, this is like kind of like a little hint, but for the most part, when you take out cash from an international card in a convenience store or from any ATM in Japan, basically, you can only take it out in increments of 10,000 yen. And this is kind of inconvenient sometimes. For example, if you're about to go meet your friends and you want to like have a dinner and you only have a 10,000 yen, it's really hard to like split the bill because there are some places where they won't just do it for you. But these 7-Eleven ATMs specifically 
actually allow you to take out 10,000 in 1,000 bills. This is such a lifesaver. Because it's actually not very convenient. Oh, convenient. There she goes again. At this point, the word convenient doesn't really sound like a word anymore. It's just not very convenient to have like a big bill all the time. Anyway, that's just a little hint. Look out for the 7-Eleven ATMs. Next is the toilets. There's toilets in pretty much every convenience store, but often they don't have a toilet, so don't bank on it. But the great thing about convenience stores in Japan is that they're freaking everywhere, so if you go into a convenience store and they don't have a loo, the next convenience store over will probably have one anyway. London is possibly the worst place in the entire world to go to a public toilet. First of all, they charge you. Second of all, they don't have them like everywhere. And thirdly, even though they charge you, they're still like stinky and disgusting. I don't really get that. But in Japan, there's toilets everywhere, at every station, at convenience stores, just everywhere. They're free and they're very clean, for the most part. So, next time you're in Japan and you're dying for a whiz, check out your local convenience store. And the last one is bins. In Japan, they basically don't have bins at all outside. Like in London, they just have like, you know, trash cans all around, you know? I remember when I went back to London last year, the year before, I don't know what year we're in. I was so impressed because there have been areas so convenient. Like you can just throw stuff away, no problem. I've been told it's something to do with like terrorist attacks or something, but in Japan they basically just don't have public bins. But save for a very, very small amount of convenience stores that happen to be in very touristy areas, they pretty much always have bins. Okay, that's pretty much it for this video. Let me know if you found it interesting, if you learned anything new, or if these things can be done in your country because genuinely, I'm curious. I couldn't do most of these things in convenience stores in England because we didn't have them. Can someone correct me if I'm wrong, but like I swear the UK doesn't have convenience stores. I mean like the type of convenience stores that they have in like the US and Japan. I swear we don't. I'm gonna Google it right now. Oh, a corner shop. I still wouldn't say that a corner shop is quite the same as a convenience store. Corner shops close, like pretty early. And then there's just Sainsbury's logo, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, things that are considered convenience stores in the UK, I would not consider to be convenience stores. Sorry if that's controversial. But yeah, that's where I'm gonna go ahead and finish this video. Thank you ever so much for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thank you, bye.